Leticia Stalk either has zero clue or zero cares or a little bit from column A and B as to how traceable phone and Google search data is. In today's video, we're going to talk about both of those. Hello Sofa Squad and welcome back to the sofa which is behind me. Roscoe is currently nesting on it. My name's Paul and as you heard in my little intro we are going to be discussing some of the phone data, some of the Google searches that she did. Now specifically we're going to focus on a couple of things for this. The text, some text messages between her and uh, Al as well as some of her searches and how they related to her looking up the fake polygraph uh, that she paid for. I think those are very telling as to her personality and some other things. And we'll use the little video clips I'm going to put up from the trial uh, as talking points. Now, this is another bit of the trial that I would highly suggest if you're following it but not watching every bit of it. And you're like, hmm, what part should I watch? Definitely, this is one of them, right? Uh, I'm just putting up a tiny little fraction of the stuff that was in there. Uh, but so much of it was so interesting and such an eye opener and snapshot into how her she thinks anyways uh let's go ahead and look at that first club the next entry is at 6 35 a.m what is that a message from gannon's phone sent to uh landon uh, gannon's mom saying i'm heading out with the neighbor searchers and then um landon responded with find my baby please did was there any um evidence that the defendant went out searching at that particular time in the morning? No. Uh, in fact, as you'll see uh, in a few minutes, the Tiguan backs into the garage and the garage door closes. Okay. It's so sad to hear Landon responding back, find my baby, please, uh, responding to the monster who did this to her baby. And then, you know, such a metaphor, uh, no, she went back into the door garage door closed. I mean, come on and what blows my mind about it again and the, you know kind of the point of this video is her absolute lack of awareness as to how traceable this stuff is now we'll know she uses multiple phones she'll be texting from Gannon's from this from that you know the whole nine yards different phone in South Carolina everything but so much of it is traceable and that's another part of this that I think is just going to make this very easy conviction, you know, and I'm not trying to say that, you know, they don't have to put forth effort or anything like that, but there's so much overwhelming evidence that she knew what she was doing and she was trying to cover her tracks. The 6.38 a.m. to 6.55 a.m., um, is there a text string? There is. It's between the defendant and Mr. Stout, and it begins with good, but why were you ignoring? I was worried you didn't make flight. Mr. Stout responds with not ignoring. I laid down. I airport haven't really slept flight leaves here at 730. The defendant responds with, I understand you are upset, but you are my teammate and parents stick together and not take it out on each other. He's coming home today. I mean, does anything just rub you the way that this does? My gosh, several things going on in this clip. First of all, Al's coming home. Son is missing. Now, this all, of course, in the time is they're not immediately thinking she has something to do with it, right? I mean, who really would? Look at how her first concern is always herself and always, you know, this whole thing with Al. Now, one thing that I've really come to the, not conclusion of, but that my opinion has solidified more on, is I think she was doing multiple things with the what she did to Ganim. First of all, obviously what she did to him. But secondly, using it as a manipulative tool to try and get closer to Al in a way. Uh, because this whole thing, we're teammates. He's coming home today. Now, that part was salt in the wound to me as far as I'm concerned. Concern, knowing he's never coming home, right? But it was almost like if you look at the text messages between her and Al and the phone conversations that they played, she's completely using this as a manipulative tactic to try and like, you know, just get attention and get closer with him and this whole thing. And I'm just like, my God, it's like she's used what she did against Gannon, almost like, a, oh, hey, well, here's a silver lining. I can use this to try to garner sympathy for myself and, you know, bring Al and I closer. It just really makes me look at her with through this eyes, through this lens of there is no level of low that she is not willing to go. And then uh, the defendant responds with, yes, that's Jane. She is out here searching. She's out her searching with us. Mr. Stalk replies with, call the news, please. Uh, the defendant says, it's on five stations. 
please don't change your plan because I want you guys to be able to be together but I'm probably going to stay somewhere else, Z. Now, what this was in relation to was uh, Landon coming and they've decided that she's going to stay at the house and Al will say, you know what, in situations like this, we put our differences aside. Well, then Leticia's like, well, you know, okay, I'm not going to mess your plans up, but I'm going to stay somewhere else. Now, I can 100% tell you, well, I can 100% tell you, but of my opinion, there's a couple of things going on here. Number one, she was hoping that he would put up a fight and be like, no, baby, I want you to stay here with me. We'll kick Landon out of the house you know that's what she wanted right she knew to toe that line very carefully though also more than that she knows what she did the last place i would want to be staying if i was her is with the mother and father of the kid that i just did this to right she knows she's gonna have to go elsewhere but she can also use it at the same time to like Number one, cause drama to be like, oh, Landon's staying at the house, which we see the clearly rubbed her the wrong way. Uh, get attention, all these type things. She's very good at using situations on different layers of manipulation, if that makes sense. So it's almost like she's using it to manipulate this over here and that over here and this over here. You know, she's, it, it's almost like a buy one, get one free. Okay with her, with everything. It's a, it's a BOGO, it's a BOGO. And the defendant says, okay, I don't want anyone here cursing and flipping out. Thank you, Z. Well, I'm heading out to the searches. Mr. Stalk says, okay. The defendant says, can you call me? And uh, Mr. Stalk says, in a minute. And then the defendant says, well, somebody saw him, but I guess you are too busy talking to someone else instead. Now, she knows good and well no one saw Gannon, right? But she'll use that, again, multiple layers of manipulation. Look at how she quickly turns. I guess you're too busy talking. Someone saw him. Like, this little carrot that she hangs out there. I mean, I'm talking, y'all, this is, this is like a new, again, Daryl Brooks, female version Daryl Brooks. Okay, it's a new level of low that we just, we don't see too often, right? I mean, but she really brings it home with us. The defendant replies with, last night around 6.30 p.m., we saw him running in the rain off Academy and Fountain Road area. The boy was running westbound on Fountain Road. Good luck on your search and sending prayers to you and your family. I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I was telling you to see what you want me to do. We have over 100 people searching. Was that basically a text message that, um, that the defendant receives from somebody else and then forwarded this to Al? That's what it is, yes. Okay. So as you heard, this was a text message received from someone else. Again, Leticia knows that this was not Gannon. And oftentimes we do see in situations like this where someone's missing, you know, you'll get these leads, which, hey, great. We, you need everything you can get, right? But what's so sad and heartbreaking is seeing how the perpetrator in this is fielding this information. And oftentimes we see this, right? Where these people like her, um, whether you call them narcissist, whatever she's got, right? They are the controller of information. They need to be in control of all information and they pivot themselves in these situations. Now, oftentimes it might not be something as serious as this, right? It's, you know, I mean, this is very serious. This can be you know, in your household, uh, in a relationship, like they control information. That's the only way I know how to say it. Um, and it's so, heartbreaking to see her doing this because the information she's controlling is in relation to a child whose life she took and she's like dangling hope in front of the parents right so this whole thing of sending him this and you know oh look they saw him and you know, so on and so forth again she knows where the body is she knows he's never coming home she knows that was not ganon so is this basically an offer coming in from somebody in the community to offer help with ca searching canines it, it is yes did the defendant ever circle back with that person to enlist their help? No, she did not. Of course she went out. She knows. You know, I sit here and think a lot of times where we see these cases where someone takes a child, a spouse, whoever out, but they're in the situation where they're supposed to, you know, be concerned and look, you know, think of her, think of Chris Watts, people like this. And they're kind of, you know, huh, about certain things, you know, because they know what happened you know so number one they're wanting to avoid getting in trouble and caught but then number two i'm just like i guess there has to be this underlying thing with them where they're just like eh, you know i was over the person i mean there's a reason they took them out right and so that's the part that baffles me is they can't even keep the facade up you know to try and pull something off, which I'm glad they don't because it helps to bring justice to the surface. Yeah, but such is the case with Leticia. She may know 
she's not going to go out there and look. She's not going to take people's offers up. She was mostly concerned about saving her name in the public light. That's what she was concerned about, which she could have done if she got out there and helped look, came off as more authentic about her, you know, fear of getting being gone, that type of stuff. But none of that happened. And again, we see that so often. Look at Chris Watts when he came home, uh, when Shanann's friend called, and he was like, okay, I'm going to come right home. And it took him forever to get there. You know, it's just like they know what happened. You know, they know what happened, so it's not a rush to them. You should have up there with you People's 692 in a sleeve. Do you have that? I do. What is People's 692? Um, it is a uh, visualization of uh, the notes section as well as uh, some web activity from the defendant's um, South Carolina phone, the third phone. Does this information um, correspond or correlate to that testimony that we had from Special Agent Co uh, Cohen about the fake polygraph phone calls uh, that we listened to a couple of weeks ago? It does. Now, let's go ahead and move on over to some of her Google searches, some of her notes and her documents, and this is in relation to the fake polygraph. So this particular part I wanted to put up here with this whole little section because I was just like, oh my God. I mean, the cringe was so powerful. So let's go ahead and watch that first clip now. And so uh, the title of the note is, in the case involving missing child Gannon Stout, do you intend on uh, dot, dot, dot? So to have a note like this created, does this require um, effort on the part of the phone user to yes. put this information in there? It does. You have to launch the note section and, and begin typing and filling out. Now, I don't know if any of y'all use these kind of notes in your phone. I, I use Google Docs, and I know what they're talking about, where the title can become the first line or whatever. And so I'm sure that uh, clearly from the question, does it require effort? You know, they're wanting to make sure that, that you no know, butt dialing or anything like that went on, right? This is what I want you to listen to these clips through. Because when I was listening to it, I was like, who in their right mind would put this on their phone and actually go through with this? And then towards the end, we're going to listen back to some of her phone call clips with the fake polygraph, lie detector place, whatever it's called, um, after we hear this right here. Because again, this is where I'm just like, oh, girl, there's no way. There's no way. This absolutely 100% knew what you were doing. And I've thought that from the get-go, right? But this is just all the evidence I'm like, knowing there was this evidence did they offer her a plea deal or did she not take it i mean i would have been like how can we you know like uh, i mean i don't want to go to trial with this right and the next line the next one is a second question saying in the case involving your stepson gannon did you inflict harm on him in any way okay yeah, we're coming in hot with that one, right? So remember, if you haven't followed this, what she has done is she is enlisting a fake polygraph place where you buy like a fake lie detector results type thing. So you enter in your own questions, okay? She's coming in hot with the first one, but they get worse. And then the third question is, did you accidentally hurt him in a physical way? Now, here's the thing with this. She's covering all bases, right? She's covering all bases. And so now for her to come back talking about, I didn't know what I was doing in that moment. No. And the fourth question is, did you murder your stepson? This is what I'm talking about. I mean, there's just, it's black or white, right? Did you do it? Yes or no, right? I'll get to my thoughts in a second. Let's watch the last question. And the fifth question is, do you know personally who is involved with your stepson disappearance? God bless little Gannon. I mean, I just can't. This is the kind of stuff when I hear it, I'm like, this poor child. God only knows what he went through with her. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, listening to this, and then especially comparing notes to the phone call that she had with the fake polygraph plays, I'm just like, oh, this paints a very clear picture as to what went on, right? And again, the fact that I'm like, why would you even do this on your phone? One thing that I have learned from all this true crime stuff that we follow is, I mean, y'all, especially after the Murdoch case where they were like, the phone turned sideways for one second and then came back this way and then did this. I'm like, y'all, they know everything you do with these phones, right? And if you don't have anything to hide, then, well, great, so be it. I mean, I get, like, none of us would want, our Google searches if isolated would be embarrassing. For people who follow true crime, they could be a little bit like, eh, at times. But there's just some things like I'm just not going to look up, right? Like, you know, this kind of stuff. 
So the fact that she's like making notes on her phone with us, it's again, par for the course with her, but still shocking nonetheless. What is people's, uh, page two of people's exhibit 692? This is a corresponding web history uh, on the defendant's phone. We're now two days after that note was created, three days after the wire call you heard uh, from Agent Cohen with uh, the gentleman from fakepolygraph.com. Okay, so again, just laying the foundation so we're all on the same page so we know what's going on. Let's continue. And uh, the defendant searched on the phone, fake polygraph test using Google. Now, first of all, I just need to say this. What kind of a, a, a society do we live in at this point that this is a thing? It feels like it should be illegal, right? I was just like, how grimy is this? I mean, how grimy? The fake polygraph place, seriously? I have so many questions about it. I mean, I'm just like, how... how I mean, it just, if you're to the point, and this is excluding this, right? This is your typical, I didn't cheat on somebody, right? This type thing. If you're to that point with something, I mean, I just don't even see how somebody would fall for it. You know what I'm saying? let alone want to remain in a situation like that. I mean, it baffles me. So I, I, this is another thing I learned from this case that I was like, didn't know that was there. Had you had a chance to look at that particular web page, that fake polygraph uh, web page? I did. Was there a place in that page where a first, someone that wants to purchase a polygraph test, would they type in their own questions? That you do. Now, this is the convenient part. You can make your own questions up. And so the questions that she used, you know, were like, did you murder your stepson? Do you know what happened? You know, like you could tell she probably was like Googling and researching on those for a minute, like trying to come up with some like real legit sounding things. But this is my thing too. What was she going to do? Where was she going to go with that? If somebody just randomly showed up talking about, I took a polygraph test. I took a polygraph test. Da, 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 da. Here's the five questions. I mean, I would be like, okay, where did you get this from? You know, it wasn't from law enforcement. It was from some local, you know, there would be so many questions, but that's the part with Leticia that kind of baffles me is that stuff doesn't really seem to phase her. Like in the face of like just something being completely obvious, she'll still lie about it. The website fake lie detector test.com was visited. Now that was another lay in the foundation little segment there, just so we know that we've moved on to fake lie detector test.com. Okay, so let's proceed. Of the right side of page three, what are we looking at there? So about 10 minutes has gone by, and now we're at the payment screen. Uh, so you uh, enter in your credit card information uh, to pay for the fake lie detector test that you just administered to yourself with the questions and answers that you wanted. Okay, when he was like, she had been on that page for 10 minutes, like really thinking about it before she went and put that credit card information in, I was like, girl was putting in work on this one, okay? She was putting in some work on this. She was like, I'm, I'm going to cook these questions up. I'm getting out of this, right? And probably felt entitled to it. So to her, she probably viewed it that way in her logic. Like, look, I thought really hard to come up with those questions. You know, y'all better believe me. Kind Kind of a thing um and i just love the way he's like you know you go to pay for the fake polygraph test that you just purchased purchased with the questions that you want to be on there again i'm just like it's like we're living out what is his name maury Paulvich or um jerry springer god rest his soul he just passed it's like we're living this out in real time now so two minutes after the payment screen on the fake lie detector website um the defendant uh googled um, can you get away with fake lie detector uh, website? And detector was uh, misspelled. I just love that he pointed out that detector was misspelled. But also, I'm just like, uh, girl, yeah, I would have Googled that first, okay? Before I made the purchase, because clearly whatever Google told her, it was wrong because it didn't work. Now, knowing all that, let's dive a little bit deeper into how it didn't work. So keep all this in mind, all these searches, all this type of stuff. Let's revisit that phone call where she called up. She was doing a Karen. She wants to speak to the manager because she didn't get her results in time. Let's just revisit that real quick. Get it again. Yeah, no, unfortunately, it's actually been blocked by management, this order, um, due to the content of the questions. So we're not going to be able to send this report. Okay. So, do, do I get my money back? Uh, unfortunately, not on this case, no. Um, obviously, due to our terms and conditions, it does clearly state that any um, sort of illegal activities or anything like that, obviously, the management do reserve the right not to send the report. 
Um, obviously, we do incur processing fees, so that's why a refund wouldn't be true. Now, this is like not the first time she's called looking for the results. It's like the third time I think she called where they're finally like, okay, yeah, you know, we can't release these because of the content of the questions. First thing out of her mouth, can I get my money back? And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's your first concern is can I get my money back? And then I love that he goes into it. No, you know, we have to do this and that. You know, you, you ain't getting your money back, sister. So what, what do you do now? Just delete it and go on about life and get money? Yes, we would do indeed. I got you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you Bye-bye. The fact that she was so willing to get off the phone speaks volumes. Because you know, if she had felt truly wronged, oh, she would have gone off. She ain't letting that slide, right? She ain't going to let the coupons be expired just one day at the grocery store checkout line without shutting the whole grocery store down over it, okay? So now let's listen to the next clip. And this is my thought process. And this is where I think we get a snapshot into how she works. So she's being told, yeah, because of the questions, you know, we can't release it, you know, and the policy, all this kind of stuff. So she doesn't really push back. She probably hangs up and goes back and reads the stuff that he said, you know, and then she cooks up a way to try and lie her way out of it. And I think that this is what we have seen throughout this entire trial. She'll get a little bit of information and then cook up a bunch of lies, but they're so obvious because she ignores blatant evidence. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I can hear you now. How can I help okay. you? Um, I talked to you earlier and you said that the request I did was um, blocked or something, but I looked at the terms and conditions and it says you can say things about like infidelity and stuff like that. So I don't, I'm not sure how that was blocked. So that again, sorry, that you can or can't. No, you, okay. So I, I did a report earlier. And you said you'd mm -hmm. send it to me. Then when I called back, you said it was um, blocked, that I wasn't allowed to get the report. But then I clicked the terms and conditions, and it says you can do questions about infidelity and stuff like that. Yes, infidelity you can, correct. Right, and that's, that's what I did. Your report was about infidelity, was it? What did you say? So you're, you're, you're saying your report was about infidelity? Yeah, like I answered, I put questions in for it, and you had to put like answers, and you said something about it being blocked. Yeah, so what were your questions? So it was about during the time that we were away inside of, another, like in another state, did I talk to, and I gave the person's individual's name, Ortega, that was one of them, then it said, are your eyes blue? And I did a couple mm -hmm. of the questions that were on the bottom. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure in that case. Unfortunately, that's not what came through. Now, this is what I'm talking about. She's going to get up here and try and tell him who he probably is reading the damn questions that she put in there on his screen, right? And sitting here looking right at them and like, she's crazy. This woman is crazy. You know, and she's going to lie right through her teeth. And I'm just like, you know, but this is what I'm talking about. But we've seen her do it the whole time. And so I just thought this was fascinating because I'm like, yeah, here she does, even on basic stuff basic stuff she is going to try and lie her way right out of it and that's the whole thing with what we've seen throughout this case and one thing that's very angering to me about it is the way that there is no accountability lying in the face of blatant blatant evidence and continuing to go and also this entitlement you know we heard one of the doctors on the stand talking about this right i mean it's next level so when i saw this come up and you know if you follow my channel you know i always talk about the criminals who go to walmart and buy all the stuff and whatnot i mean this is her walmart moment right here i mean this kind of stuff this fake polygraph test i'm like girl that alone right there for evidence i would have been like oh no I, there's no way i'm going to a courtroom you know what is the plea deal what what do you want to do here to avoid trial right but it just keeps getting worse i mean the google searches her talking all the pings and the pongs and all this that have come forth and showing where she was at this time and not only what she was doing but the lack of what she was doing helping search being a you know assistant running out of the state hiding all the things that she did right are going to, in my opinion, lead up to getting a conviction. So that's it. Again, this is one of the parts of the trial that I would say watch this, you know, the whole testimony about the 
data points and all that type stuff uh, because there's so many different things in there uh, but let me know what your favorite parts were what you thought about it and you know we're very close to the end I mean but you're gonna probably be watching this Thursday morning uh, I don't believe they're gonna have trial that day but we're very close to sending this to the jury and closing arguments and that type thing so where are we at what do y'all think let's get it going down in the comment section do you think that you know we're gonna get a conviction do you think there's a small chance she could get off with the not get off but you know what I'm saying with the insanity plea uh, let me know down below and if you have still been sitting here watching well you know what I appreciate it and next time we gather around the old coffee cup I'll see y'all soon